Oh, we good. I mean, you, you catch me probably just over half an hour before a DJ set, and it doesn't matter where I am or what environment I'm in. I'm, one's always really buzzing at this point. Um, good. Especially when you come into an event, you can see it's absolutely ramo. Occasionally, you, you can do a club or something, and you come in by a back door, you almost don't know what it's going to be like. Yeah. And then there's a bit more kind of caution and trepidation, but... Uh, here, I've been through the, the event, massive uh, arenas, uh, and, and just excited and ready to go. Well, I've been in there myself uh, today already, and I, it's, it's definitely going off. So, Jules, as you mentioned, I know we don't have a great deal of time. Uh, th this is the 90s rave uh, in Anglesey, Edinburgh. Obviously, it's the very first uh, kind of gig of its scale for a very long time now. Uh, I mean, the gig has been put off four times. It's now going ahead at the fifth attempt, and that alone kind of reminds us of how much of a kind of crazy and difficult two years it's been for, for, for obvious reasons. Yeah, I think it's been a crazy and difficult kind of two years in Scotland. It was probably a crazy and difficult year and a half in England. So in, in England, I did, uh, from sort of July onwards, I did a lot of festivals, but I've only actually been up to Scotland. I mean, I've literally been to Scotland 200 plus times in my life. Um, but on this occasion, this is only the second time post-pandemic. So it's the longest period of not going to Scotland. I did one thing at Glasgow in the biggest club there. But yep. this is my first sort of Scottish festival in, in more than two years. And, uh, you know, and I am... And I'm not just saying I don't go to anywhere and say, oh, I just, you're the best no, crown. No. I absolutely love Scotland. Good. I've got Good. a huge, huge deep seated love for Scotland in so many different ways. Glad to hear it. Glad yeah. to hear it. So you kind of touched on it there, uh, just the whole kind of a year and a half, two years of the, the lockdowns. Just give, give us a bit of a reminder of what your life was like kind of pre lockdown with regards to your DJing. The numbers of the gigs you had, you're producing, you've got the band on the go now as well, yeah. and also just your kind of day to day stuff as a family man and also a lawyer. Well, uh, well, at the beginning of 2020, um, but by the by the beginning of a year, you've got a fairly good idea of what that year is going to look like. You may not have all your bookings in the diary already, but you've got a substantial proportion of them because a lot of gigs, especially the bigger ones, do tend to be booked quite early. So I looked at you know. Uh, Ripped over the, the next page in the calendar, along came 2020, I'm like, this is going to be one of my busiest years in a, over a decade. So I was like, you know, really, really happy because I've been doing this a long time. You're, you're only as good as your last gig. And uh, the sort of endorsement of the fact that things have been going really well was, was the diary. So um, fast forward to the end of January, suddenly one started hearing about this new, um, this new virus that was going around. Um, did a few gigs in January, some in February, and then of course from mid March onwards, completely gone. Mm -hmm. um, so a year that was that had promised so much just turned out to be a uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was I don't want to I don't want to plead sort of poverty or misery because a lot of people had it considerably worse than me. I do two things. I'm uh, I've got my own specialist uh, music law practice yeah. where I'm, I'm a lawyer representing predominantly artists that very it's not only dance music but I do a lot of dance music look after some of the biggest artists in the world so that continued during lockdown and actually continued prospered because a lot of the people a lot of artists who've been making music who've been sorry a lot of artists have been touring prodigiously suddenly thought well I've got no income from tourists and I have to make more records here write more yeah. songs uh, so so actually that element of what I did was very very buoyant and I'm and I'm very lucky because I've got these two strings in my bow. But friends of mine who were just DJs were literally I mean, just had the, the the I don't know their backsides ripped clean out of them. You know, they had and many of whom had no um, no right to claim money for whatever reasons. There were a lot of uh, there were a lot of creatives who fell through the crack of furlough and uh, ability to kind of have some government support. Right. Okay. And. Just as, as I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, we're eventually getting back to some kind of normality, if we can call it that, uh, not just a, in a kind of musical perspective, but as, as a kind of general terms. What, what does it mean for you coming from a musical perspective and, and what are your hopes and expectations for the coming months, especially now that we're kind of entering into the, the festival season, if you like? 
Yeah, well, as I say, I got a bit of a festival season just in England at the tail end of uh, last year, uh, probably from, from August onwards. Um, but now to be able to do everything, everything's back open. Uh, the, the clubs in Ibiza are obviously a big part of my life, and they they were, to all intents and purposes, closed for two years. They, they were open for a really short period at the end of October 2021, but, you know, that's not really the time anybody goes to Ibiza, let's face it. Um, so it's a comp- so a whole season, you know, every we all live for the summer, let's face it, don't we? You know, whether you live in whether you live in the Mediterranean uh, and you you're lucky enough to have be- better weather for the majority of the year, um, you still live for the summer. I think everybody lives for the summer. And and last year I got a bit of the summer. This year I'm gonna get a whole bit of summer. And you know, that I thankfully people are being a bit more sanguine and a bit more level headed about COVID because COVID numbers are still very high. But I think, you know, obviously hospitalisation numbers and deaths are, uh, aren't anywhere like the way they were. And we've just got to learn to live with this thing. And, and part of learning to live with this thing is, is, is sort of doing the things that we did before. And, and part of that is just hanging out with people, just going out and, you know, enjoying the rest of humanity. And that's what sort of clubbing and festival culture um, is all about, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can, you, you'll see yourself when you go out there today. That, that's exactly what everybody out there is thinking and feeling. It's like they've been trapped for two years. Yeah. They're out and they're absolutely loving it, and it, it's great day so far. And I'm pretty sure it will continue to be just as good. So, as I, as I mentioned, Jules, I know that they've pushed their time. So, just just kind of lastly, uh, how are you? You've probably already answered them. How are you feeling, kind of right here, right now? Are they getting out there tonight and doing? But you love most in front of thousands of kind of mad crazy Scottish clubs. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny one when you do it when you bit when you do a big event. Obviously, some of my shows are me just me as the headliner doing club or event type things. Whereas when you're doing something that's a shorter set, because when there's a big lineup, inevitably you have a slightly shorter set to accommodate all the different names. Um, there's a, there's a there's a if you like there's a emotion that one goes through. You sort of come in, you pay a bit of attention to what's going on vibe wise because sucking up the vibe and regurgitating it through the decks is what, what DJs is all about. But then you go in sort of 10 or 15 minutes beforehand, listen to all the person before you play. Um, and I, I'm certainly not one for having a pre-ordained idea about what I'm going to play before I go on. I, ne- I kind of never do. I just, I think part, of, yeah, part of the essence of, well, a big part of the essence of being a DJ is just looking at the crowd, feeling it, having a little probe to see what works. Um, very soon, within two or three records, you'll, you'll have a good idea of what's working, you know, what type of music, whether the crowd want it's very commercial, whether they're a bit more kind of willing to, to, to buy into you as a brand and just enjoy great records irrespective of that. So there's a whole there's a whole bunch of litmus paper stuff that you do just before you go on the decks, uh, just after you go on the decks, and then it's you know, let's 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 take it down the uh, the musical highway. Okay. Well I mean m- myself I've been out there this morning, I've been into the nineties trance in Club Classics Ten. And from very early on, it's been very, very busy. So I'm sure you won't be disappointed. So uh, as I say, I know you are going go. and half an hour. So best of luck today for the summer. And good summer. Thank you. Thank you.